Discover the remarkable life of the 39th President of the United States, Jimmy Carter, in 2024. Explore his net worth, delve into his unique lifestyle, and uncover his inspiring biography. From his early life and political career to his post-presidential endeavors and contributions to society, this video provides an in-depth look at Jimmy Carter's enduring legacy. Don't miss this comprehensive overview of one of America's most influential figures. James Carter is an American politician and humanitarian who served as the 39th President of the United States from 1977 to 1981. A member of the Democratic Party, Carter was the 76th Governor of Georgia from 1971 to 1975 and a Georgia State Senator from 1963 to 1967. Born October 1, 1924, age 99 years, Plains, Georgia, United States. Presidential term, January 20, 1977, to January 20, 1981. Awards, Nobel Peace Prize, more. Spouse, Rosalind Carter, M. 1946-2023. Children, James Carter, Amy Carter, Jack Carter, Donnell Carter. Vice President, Walter F. Mondale, 1977-1981. Organizations founded, the Carter Center, more. Jimmy Carter net worth $10 million. Early life. James Earl Carter Jr. was born October 1, 1924, in Plains, Georgia, at the Wise Sanitarium, where his mother worked as a registered nurse. Carter thus became the first American president born in a hospital. He is the eldest child of Bessie Lillian Gordy and James Earl Carter Sr., 70 and a descendant of English immigrant Thomas Carter, who settled in the colony of Virginia in 1635. Numerous generations of Carters lived as cotton farmers in Georgia. Plains was a boom town of 600 people at the time of Carter's birth. His father was a successful local businessman, who ran a general store and was an investor in farmland. Carter's father had previously served as a reserve second lieutenant in the U.S. Army Quartermaster Corps during World War I. During Carter's infancy, his family moved several times, settling on a dirt road in nearby archery, which was almost entirely populated by impoverished African-American families. His family eventually had three more children, Gloria, Ruth, and Billy. He got along well with his parents. His mother was often absent during his childhood, working long hours. Although his father was staunchly pro-segregation, he allowed Jimmy to befriend the black farmhands' children. Carter was an enterprising teenager who was given his own acre of Earl's farmland, where he grew, packaged, and sold peanuts. He also rented out a section of tenant housing that he had purchased. Personal Life Carter's hobbies include painting, fly fishing, woodworking, cycling, tennis, and skiing. He also has an interest in poetry, particularly the works of Dylan Thomas. During a state visit to the UK in 1977, Carter suggested that Thomas should have a memorial in Poets' Corner at Westminster Abbey, this later came to fruition in 1982. Carter was a personal friend of Elvis Presley, whom he and Rosalind met on June 30, 1973, before Presley was to perform on stage in Atlanta. They remained in contact by telephone two months before Presley's sudden death in August 1977. Carter later recalled an abrupt phone call received in June 1977 from Presley who sought a presidential pardon from Carter to help George Klein's criminal case, at the time Klein had been indicted for only mail fraud and was later found guilty of conspiracy. According to Carter, Presley was almost incoherent because of barbiturates, although he phoned the White House several times again, this was the last time they spoke. The day after Presley's death, Carter issued a statement and explained how he had changed the face of American popular culture. Carter filed a report with both the International UFO Bureau and the National Investigations Committee on Aerial Phenomena, stating that he sighted an unidentified flying object in October 1969. Early Political Career, 1963-1971 Georgia State Senator, 1963-1967 As racial tension inflamed in Plains by the 1954 Supreme Court of the United States ruling in Brown v. Board of Education, Carter favored racial tolerance and integration, but often kept those feelings to himself to avoid making enemies. By 1961, he began to speak more prominently of integration as a member of the Baptist Church and chairman of the Sumter County School Board. 
In 1962, Carter announced his campaign for an open Georgia state Senate seat 15 days before the election. Rosalind, who had an instinct for politics and organization, was instrumental to his campaign. While early counting of the ballots showed Carter trailing his opponent Homer Moore, this was later proven to be the result of fraudulent voting. The fraud was found to have been orchestrated by Joe Hurst, the chairman of the Democratic Party in Quitman County. Carter challenged the election result, which was confirmed fraudulent in an investigation. Following this, another election was held, in which Carter won against Moore as the sole Democratic candidate, with a vote margin of 3,013 to 2,182. The civil rights movement was well underway when Carter took office. He and his family had become staunch John F. Kennedy supporters. Carter remained relatively quiet on the issue at first, even as it polarized much of the county, to avoid alienating his segregationist colleagues. He did speak up on a few divisive issues, giving speeches against literacy tests and against an amendment to the Georgia Constitution which he felt implied a compulsion to practice religion. Carter entered the State Democratic Executive Committee two years into office, where he helped rewrite the state party's rules. He became the chairman of the West Central Georgia Planning and Development Commission, which oversaw the disbursement of federal and state grants for projects such as historic site restoration. When Bo Calloway was elected to the United States House of Representatives in 1964, Carter immediately began planning to challenge him. The two had previously clashed over which two-year college would be expanded to a four-year college program by the state, and Carter saw Calloway, who had switched to the Republican Party, as a rival who represented aspects of politics he despised. Carter was re-elected to a second two-year term in the state Senate, where he chaired its Education Committee and sat on the Appropriations Committee toward the end of the term. He contributed to a bill expanding statewide education funding and getting Georgia Southwestern State University a four-year program. He leveraged his regional planning work, giving speeches around the district to make himself more visible to potential voters. On the last day of the term, Carter announced his candidacy for the House of Representatives. But Callaway decided to run for governor, and Carter changed his mind, deciding to run for governor too.